amid the back and forth between Russia and the U.S. over the fates of two Americans detained in Russian jails, one American has not been part of those intensifying negotiations. Amna Navaz is back now with this story. Russia's Foreign Minister Lavrov said today he'll soon propose a date for talks with U.S. Secretary of State Blinken as Russia weighs a prisoner swap to free detained Americans Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. But there is a third American, also held by Russia and detained now for almost a year. His name is Mark Fogel. He's a 61-year-old teacher who has lived and worked in Russia for nine years. And in a case strikingly similar to Griner's, Fogel was arrested when Russian airport authorities found vape cartridges and cannabis buds in his luggage in August of 2021. He was accused of intending to sell to students, convicted, and sentenced to 14 years of hard labor. Vogel's family says he suffers from chronic pain and the marijuana was medicinal. They want the U.S. government to bring him home. Joining me now from Missoula, Montana, is his sister, Anne Fogel. Anne, welcome to the News Hour, and thank you for joining us. First and foremost, just tell us, how is your brother doing? Have you been able to talk to him or communicate with him in any way? No one has talked to him. Uh, we are able to write some letters through the um, the. Uh, the Russian prison system. Um, it's it's uh, a bit of a convoluted system, though, because um, while sometimes he is able to get our letters in English, sometimes he gets them in Russian, and then they get translated into English, and then we get a photocopied picture of a handwritten letter, and we are then then we have to find a translator where we are. There's a lot lost in translation. I'm sure you were watching Secretary Blinken announcing this week they've put forward a deal, a proposed deal, to Russia. Secretary Blinken mentioned Brittany Griner. He mentioned Paul Whelan. He didn't mention your brother's name. And I just wonder what you thought in that moment. It was a gut punch. It was a, it was a gut punch. We've been trying to um, raise our voices. We were advised by the uh, State Department to keep a low profile through sentencing, which we did. Um, and we've been really trying to follow the rules and really give the Russian judicial, judicial system a, a chance to work. Over the past year, of course, things have gotten so much, the relationship has gotten so much worse. Um, so that became apparent that time was not playing in our favor at all. It's hard to hear Secretary Blinken talk about Greiner and Whalen and not include Mark. And do you believe that the U.S. government is right now doing everything it can to free your brother? Well, no, I don't, because he has not been deemed wrongfully detained. And that is, we need that, we need that moniker in order to move him into the, the potential negotiations for the swap. So, no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm hopeful, though. I'm hopeful that um, things will come right. Um, I think that we have we've gotten a lot of letters sent to the State Department. There's a petition now that's going about, um, and we've of course we're on the news hour, so this is a very positive thing. And luckily, we've had some um, coverage from the other networks as well. So we're very very thankful for that. And tell us a little bit about your brother. Um, he chose to go there. He'd been living in Russia for nine years. He was teaching at uh, what I understand to be sort of an international school where U.S. and British and Canadian diplomats sent their kids. Why, why was he there? Why did he choose this work? Tell us about him. Mark uh, had always had a, uh, had a wanderlust um, and chose to um, join the international school community well, 36 years ago. He has lived in, I think, seven different countries with his wife and kids. They raised their kids overseas. He comes home every summer and every Christmas, but their life has been overseas. And they love that. They love Russia uh, and they love the Russian people. He is a true blue uh, history teacher. He's an extremely passionate person. He was really able to make that work in his life where he got to do his passion. And I don't think he's ever worked a day in his life as a result. I think his students would say the same thing. He has inspired a lot of people, including the son of uh, the former ambassador, Michael McFall. Um, his son was in Mark's class as well. 
And we know Ambassador McFall has been among those publicly calling for your brother's release. Uh, you've mentioned your family has said publicly he, he suffers from chronic pain. That's why he had the medicinal marijuana with him, a 14-year prison sentence. What, what do you worry that would do to him? He is meant to go to a work colony. I don't, uh, I don't see how that would be possible. He is, um, his first back surgery was, th was at 30 years of age and he's had, you know, one failed back surgery after another, which then culminated in hip replacements and um, shoulder surgeries. And uh, it's not, um, he's, he's not, he's not able to do manual work at this point limps. Um, one leg is appreciably smaller than the other. He's got um, very significant scarring on his back. I, I just don't understand um, how the, um, the Russian courts didn't look at the stack of medical files that we sent and sent him home at that point. Um, it's, um, it's crushing. He, he, he will not survive this. He will not survive 14 years in a work colony. I think it's inhumane for, for the U.S. government to leave him. That's how I feel. And have you or anyone in your family asked to speak directly with President Biden? Yes. President Biden, I want to talk to you, please. Um, he's a school teacher. Your wife's a school teacher. I, I, he has done amazing things. He doesn't belong in a Russian jail. I would love to speak to President Biden. He's my president. But no, we have not as of yet. If this deal goes through, are you concerned your brother will be left behind? As the deal currently stands, yes. We're, we're very worried he's going to be left behind. And I, I worry that there will not be another opportunity like this. The thought of, of never seeing him again is, is terrifying. And is there anything else you want people to know about your brother? He's an extraordinary person. He's an extraordinary teacher. And he needs to come home. He just needs to come home. That is Ann Fogel joining us from Missoula, Montana. She is the sister of Mark Fogel, who is currently detained in Russia and has been for a year. Ann, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing our story.